Joining us now, Dr. Jennifer Cottle, a family physician. Uh, Dr. Cottle, good morning to you. Good morning. So we heard from um, uh, Dr. Fauci uh, earlier, well, I guess last week now, that if you have goggles, if you have a face uh, shield, use it. What do you think? I agree with that. I do agree. If you have those things on hand, it's only going to add an extra layer of protection. But it's really important to specify that this is not instead of or a replacement for face masks. Face masks still come first, and it's what we must do. And in fact, the CDC does not recommend using face shields for everyday activities or as a substitute for face masks. So that is a formal recommendation. But if you have the goggles and the face shield, it can be great because remember, coronavirus, just as many other viruses, can be potentially spread through our mucous membranes. That's our mouth, our, uh, our nose, and then, of course, our eyes. Of course, face masks cannot protect our eyes. So again, if you have that goggles, that pair of goggles and a face shield, Go ahead and wear those along with a mask if you wish for extra protection. I want to ask you, doctor, about the uh, Midwest, the increase that they're seeing in COVID cases right now. Is there any explanation for why that's happening now as we head into fall when we would, we would assume that COVID would intersect with the regular flu? Sure, and uh, I have a feeling, and, and I suspect that, that it really will intersect with the regular flu. In my office as a family practi practitioner, we start giving flu shots in the middle of August. So we're coming into flu season right now. Why it's happening in the Midwest, I mean, it's not surprising that coronavirus literally has spread throughout the country. What I am hoping, however, is that the Midwest heeds the lessons, the hard lessons learned that we've learned on the East Coast and that the South is this, and California is still learning right now and really puts mitigation efforts in place right now, putting in place those, those mask mandates, the social distancing, closing restaurants and bars and things of that nature to really get ahead of it. You don't want to be behind the eight ball with COVID. And if there's any sign that cases are increasing, which we're seeing in the Midwest, this is absolutely the, t the time to start that mitigation uh, aggressively, in my opinion. Um, we know that uh, in North Carolina, there are some evacuation orders for some of those outer banks, some of those beach communities, as Tropical Storm Isaias is uh, getting closer to the coast. And some people we know will potentially head to uh, shelters. They have uh, said that they will open shelters. What should people know? I know that the, the government is preparing, but what should people going into these shelters do know to keep themselves safe? Sure. First of all, this couldn't have come at a worse time, right? This is it's 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 tragedy after tragedy happening. Um, so the same principles really apply to shelters as they do to say schools or really any other environment. Things that we have to keep in mind: uh, the face masks. And again, here, if you have a face shield or goggle to wear in, in addition, that would be excellent. Also, the hand washing cannot be stressed enough. If you cannot access soap and water, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that has at least 60% alcohol in it. Social distancing as much as you can. And I know there are efforts to try to make shelters as safe as possible, but that's still going to be important to stay only with your group, your group of people that you have sort of been with throughout this time. Um, you know, trying to maintain those those efforts despite the, the double tragedy, shall we say, is going to be most important. You just went through what we individually have to do, but um, the CDC is right. saying this morning that there are about 20,000 more people in the U.S. who could die from COVID in the next 21 days. People hear that and they want something done. If we're yeah. doing everything we can do individually, what is it that we need from leadership, whether that be federal, whether that be state, whether that be for right. protocols, cooperations, resources, what is the biggest lack right now? Right. Well, you know, you really said it. We are lacking so much. We're basically a coordinated sort of national strategy, which so many of, of my colleagues we've been talking about. There is no national strategy to, to attack COVID. And that's it's ridiculous um, in our nation that we really don't have a national plan. There needs to be adequate testing, which we still don't have in many places. There needs to be contact tracing that's done consistently. Uh, and there also needs to be isolation. This sort of national strategy has been important from the beginning, and we haven't had it. And not only that, in order to get our schools back and running, you know, parents and teachers and so many of us are worried about back to school. One of the reasons why is because we haven't had a national coordinated strategy to help us get into this next season. That is what we need. We still need this. We need this actually more than ever. Mm. Dr. Jennifer Cottle, always appreciate your expertise. Thank you for getting up early for us this morning. Thanks, doctor. Thank you.